Hi and welcome back to the workshop. Today's video is all about Paxton Road 2 and its successor in waiting Paxton Road 3 and some of the design process. I feel like it's now getting to the point where there's something I can share and discuss and so what we're going to do is we'll take a look at the existing layout and I'll talk about why that's worked really really well for me and what I wanted to add and then some of the challenges I've gone through in thinking how, about how that physically fat through and because I'm really concerned with making sure the follow-up is as successful as this one. So there's a couple of key basic elements there. So without further ado, let's take a look. Here's Paxton Road 2. Excuse uh, James Hill and Steadicam. I'm actually operating now handheld. I think it'd be easier for, for what we're talking about today. So Paxton Road 2 is only um, 500 mil long, just over 20 centimetres deep. Um, two plane tracks, um, two uncoupling magnets, the front spur one here, the back about here. Um, they're on just a, a manual throw, so when they're pushed in, they're in place. When they're pulled back, they're not. And then a really simple sector plate, which is wired upon a flying lead, so it can be disconnected. Just slides across two positions, uh, dead easy to use. Um, and then in terms of the layout wiring, it's literally a power power supply, 12 volt DC power supply and a controller plugged in. And that's it. And um, with these tiny little grain flourish 08s, works beautifully. Really, really nice to use. Um, and what you'll find in, in the evening, I'll grab this seat and I'll jack it up so that I'm actually then viewing the layout more like this at eye level. And it works really nicely. You get totally lost in the scene. It's hands free most of the time whilst the couplings are playing ball. And it's just a really nice way to spend a little bit of time. And so because of that, I was really keen to take this step forwards. And one of the things I've wanted to do for a while was um, remember some photos, I suppose, that inspired the whole project in the first place. And what this feels like it was lacking was an ability to run a train through the scene. And so um, I mocked up a track down the back behind that fence. I just placed a piece of track in there and spent some time looking at it and thinking about how it might look. Uh, and, it, and it felt like that was something to consider, something to look at. And then also thinking about the size of this shelf. The shelf's just over one meter. It's about 110, I think. 110 long, it's just an Ikea uh, lack shelf. And it felt like there was space because uh, to do something more because there's a little bit of space this end and there's plenty of space this end because the pivot for the sector is about here. And so, you know, that could all be moved this way and it would still operate. It wouldn't get knocked. It's uh, it's not in the way. And so the thought was, what could we done? Could we have a slightly larger layout? Could I get that third track in? OK, so uh, let's go and, uh, and take a look at the original scheme. So taking a look at the notebook, um, Paxton Road 3 was originally conceived with a three uh, exit sector plate at this end, that third track down the back, which would exit out the scene and have a fiddlestick. And that fiddlestick would operate like Kinross just lent up against the door. I chose some inspiration in terms of Gower Chemicals at uh, the old Danny Gregg shed uh, in Swansea, um, which also lent me a water tower and some scene. And what I thought was that this part of the yard would be like a speed link siding as were, and then this siding was into the chemical works uh, itself. Uh, and then potentially this was not only a way in, but maybe an offstage uh, uh, tra um, traffic, perhaps representing Visteon at Ford or whatever the engine plant was. But I started to have real concerns about sitting down, operating, that's the two position sector. I don't need to look. It's either one or the other. There's no middle track to a line. But how could I do that with three, three tracks? So I thought, well, if I could replace the, ex the three exit sector with a turnout, I might be able to get the best of both worlds. Okay. Um, did some thinking then about polarity switching. If you recall, all these uh, cameo layouts use a very thin um, baseboard, which is made out of two two pieces of six mil MDF, which means there isn't a lot of space for turnout operation um, and uh, and uh, controlling the polarity of that frog. So I did one. I've got a couple of ideas. I might just do it manually, but one I did uh, play with was using a micro switch and a bar. Um, it, it's not rocket science here, but the idea of fitting that into the narrow depth um, appealed. OK, so then things moved on into mock ups and the idea that maybe actually if I've got that turnout, that's going to mean this siding here isn't going to be as long. So I'm going to have to move the whole scheme down. So maybe the whole facility is representing a, um, a speed link or is a speed link yard and Dan uh, Gower Chemicals or someone like Gower Chemicals is op uh, is operating out of the building, but actually the yard's in use for general traffic. And so I'll pull both tracks into the yard and perhaps show where the, the track used to go into the engine shed 
Um, apologies for the notification on the uh, the iPad behind me there. Uh, that track down the back is going to be segregated by a fence. So when you're watching it like this, you'll see a train appearing and disappearing. Uh, it really will feel separate to the rest of the layout because it is actually going to be segregated by a fence. So the yard and the main line or the branch line, as it were. So taking a look back in the notebook, that takes us to this, as you can see, as illustrated with um, lifted rails here and some different colour tarmac. Uh, same framing at this end as Paxton Road. It worked there while I change it in terms of the overbridge and the uh, and the tree. Um, same sort of cameo presentation. Started to then think about um, what sort of traffic might appear. Vans, resin tanks, opens, cement wagons, scrap wagons, all things that I'm hoping to run and where they might um, end up on the layout. Um, which got me thinking about the off-stage area because the off-stage area with one just one track might be limiting. Maybe I'll need a sector that end and that could be a two-position sector as well. Um, but then considering thinking, that is, am I just overcomplicating things? So we ended up with actually that that's, that fiddlestick's going to be 500 mil long, which is certainly long enough for a train and a part of that fiddlestick put to one side as used as a siding. So you can store a train there for operation, pull it out onto the layout, do some shunting, come back and collect some empties, take them back onto the layout and exchange them for the loads and then push the load back in before reassembling your train and re re reversing back into here. So I think in terms of operation now, I'm getting closer to what I wanted. I wanted the ability to run a train through the scene. I wanted the simplicity of a two, two, um, two siding setting, I wanted uncoupling magnets, I wanted a little bit of extra traffic which the offstage siding gives me, gives me an excuse to run things that don't necessarily fit on the layout as such um, and hopefully a slightly larger scene with a slightly taller window which will work better in the position it's uh, it's now displayed. So I think we're now at a position where I can actually put all that together, um, mock it up uh, in MDF and start to think about uh, about construction. Um, as you can see, I've already made a start on some of the structures. This hasn't appeared on the blog yet. Um, this is the uh, the building inspired by uh, the shed at Danny Gray, but not much reduced. And there's a water tower. And obviously, I've now got my hands on some of this lovely British Fire Scale Code 40 concrete sleepered uh, flat bottom track, as well as their bullhead. Um, so, yeah, exciting. It'd be interesting to see how this comes together. Apologies for the handheld camera, um, but this really is a bit of a... A record of a conversation and a thought process, um, which have hopefully is of interest to you all in uh, in showing how, you know, we don't arrive at the end solution uh, instantly. We take inspiration, we work through that, we think about our constraints, we think about things that are concerning us and we work out some solutions for those that make us feel more comfortable in making a start with a physical layout. Anyway, until next time, uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please do consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Um, I really appreciate it. Any thoughts, any comments, any questions, stick them in the comments and I will get back to you uh, as soon as I can. All right.